Bastards. Uh, dit is part 2 of a how to survive as a civilian uh, in a war. Uh, today we are especially going to talk about what to do during the conflict itself. Like during battles, uh, occupation, invasion. Uh, these are the rules, uh, uh, tips I would say that you can use to survive. Uh, the first tip is uh, always carry, carry the next items. A gas mask. Uh, buy a gas mask. Um, yeah, b first of all, CBRN war, even if it's for riots, when uh, when they shoot like tear gas in, in crowds and you're passing by, uh, CBRN, uh, chemical, biological and nuclear uh, warfare, is a possibility, uh, less chance of, but depends on the conflicts and the kind of uh, forces, it's a possibility. And even if you do not, uh, if there is no risk of uh, CBRN uh, attacks, uh, when a bomb or a grenade or rocket uh, hits a building, it creates a lot of dust and smoke. And uh, yeah, if you want to help people around and you don't want to get dust lung, uh, it's ha very handy to to uh, have a gas mask at hand so you don't get uh, your lungs uh, uh, damaged uh, because of all the debris and the dust that's going to fly around. So that's why, uh, why it's handy. Next, uh, Israeli bandages and tourniquets. Because during a war, uh, yeah, lost bullets, shrapnel flying around, uh, lost uh, bombs, uh, booby traps, landmines, uh, perhaps war crimes, or you get me uh, caught in the midst of the battle. There is all. Uh, there's so much more risk to get hurt uh, and uh, get injured. So, to help yourself or another person who got hit by shrapnel or bullets or whatever. Uh, always have some way to stabilize the wounds so you can get them to a hospital because uh, during a war or battle or invasion hospitals will be overcrowded uh, or will not have the resources to treat someone immediately so have a way to stabilize the uh, bleeding wounds or uh, or trauma is a good way to to extend someone's life till they can get professional medical help so uh, have a way to stop bleeding and stabilize wounded people. Uh, next, food and water. Uh, always have, uh, I would suggest to always carry a, a filled bottle with water and one emergency ration or uh, energy bars. Why? Uh, it's for in case you get stopped uh, uh, by checkpoints uh, or you get detained or stopped by patrol and they will, uh, they, they, it takes some time to get some identifications or because of, of uh, problems with the uh, bureaucracy of the gov of the local governments, uh, yeah, waiting lines can be long. So even uh, for checkpoints, it could happen that you are waiting several hours because so many people want to go through an area or uh, try to get away from the battles, but military uh, checkpoints will stop everyone to check uh, their identity or something. So that can, can take a long time. So stay hydrated, stay uh, full of energy. Uh, yeah, for a long time. So always have th those things uh, on you, and uh, you can uh, get into waiting lines very long. Uh, next, curfews. Uh, yeah, during a war, curfews are not something to mess with. It's not like uh, a teenager who who crawls out of their parents' house and gets uh, a f and gets a fine or uh, gets uh, how do you say this grounded. No, curfew during war is uh, some serious business. If you get caught during the night without a good reason or a permit, uh, you get detained or, in worst cases, you get uh, detained as a possible uh, insurgent of a guerrilla. Uh, and you don't want that. Uh, that's the reason why there are curfews in the first way. Uh, because people who will do so, uh, stuff during the night, do, in a wartime situation, they are up to, usually up to no good, according to, in the eyes of military. So we're talking about criminals, guerrilla insurgents, uh, people who are perhaps uh, resistance fighters, those things. Uh, yeah, so military will take uh, these things serious. So you should take this also too serious. So if you're going to flee, have a good reason, have uh, have a permit or or uh, get some fake documents for uh, certain occupations that will allow you to get in the night if you want to to flee or bug out. But be uh, take it very serious uh, because yeah. Because yeah, the consequences can be bad, and you could even get shot because you are probably a spy or uh, for insurgents. So take uh, so take uh, a with this. Uh, next, 
Uh, don't forget your documents. Always have your papers with you. Uh, why? Uh, checkpoints, like I said before, are will will be everywhere. Soldiers who need to find out if do if the people who want to pass through certain roads are civilians, uh, people they are looking for, or suspicious figures they are on their list, or a military from the enemy. Uh, even even friendly forces uh, forces can uh, can be. Uh, making problems if you do not have those documents even though they are friendly forces so don't forget your documents because if you don't uh, there could be uh, a lot of problems uh sorry uh next uh, important thing is try to limit your travel uh why uh if you're just going to somewhere without uh, a very good reason to like going to family or something is perhaps a good reason but if they say everyone stay in place uh, lockdown or something and you're just going somewhere uh, Yeah, it's you have to have an explanation for checkpoints or or things why because an example is during World War one uh, People from certain areas who spoke another language had other accents or could not explain their uh, Purpose in that area. Well, they were they were trialed and uh, not even trialed because they were just shot because they were uh, spies get shot uh, immediately without a trial uh, in a lot of cases so if they think you're a spy you're in big pro uh, trouble so always have a, your documents and have a purpose to go somewhere that you can explain on a legitimate legitimate way um, yeah something to think about uh, that not many civilians because yeah rights uh, rights are suspended during war so yeah do not back talk to the to the to them uh, next thing is actually about this be polite uh, don't provoke uh, what do I mean by that um, try to if if military are, are making trouble like some documents are you forgotten some documents and you only have to go 10 meters uh, across the checkpoint till you get on your destination and you make a make a fuss about it or you calling them the soldiers names or you you just uh, yell yell some uh, curse words at uh, enemy soldiers because yeah they invaded your country or killed one of your family members during those battles. Uh, yeah, try to restrain yourself from doing these things because during a war, military uh, soldiers from even either friendly forces and especially enemy forces uh, will be quickly agitated. They are tired. They are under stress. They are on high alertness for all for a. Uh, on a high, very high alertness because yeah guerrilla fighters enemy forces snipers ieds those are all stress factors some soldiers perhaps have post traumatic stress syndrome so you do not you do not want to provoke such people under such stress who carry guns uh yeah because that's a way a lot of war crimes get uh, uh happen yeah soldiers get provoked get provoked so even not only by throwing rocks or uh, or such things uh, also by, uh, like I said, back talking, uh, curse words, try to restrain yourself, uh, even though if the soldiers uh, deserve it, even though if they are dicks, try to restrain yourself, be polite, you don't want any more problem, de-escalation is the word here. Uh, save yourself some trouble, even though you have every right to, to call them whatever, but try to restrain it and save it for later on when the time is right. Uh, next thing. Do not uh, photograph, do not write in public, do not draw pictures. Uh, even if you see something happening, like soldiers are uh, beating up some guy or uh, doing some, especially when they are doing a war crime, do not film with your cell phone. You could film, but do it subtle and without them noticing because uh, soldiers who notice they are getting filmed know they can get into problems in big trouble later on. So. They will try, they will confiscate your uh, photo, your uh, camera, your cell phone, or perhaps if they see if you saw the you were filming them, or even worse, they will try they will perhaps kill you because they might uh, to cover up their crimes or in uh, in other cases they will think you're a spy from the insurgents and you're taking uh, pictures of them. Uh, so for locations, for the for weaponry, giving informations, uh, drawing up plans. And uh, or even uh, taking pictures of the faces because during the war in uh, during the retreats from Afghanistan, what the uh, Taliban did was 
if they knew know the identity or the face of a certain soldier in a certain garrison, they would threaten, make uh, make make uh, a way of yeah, through communication by some way that they know who they are and they will kill or hurt their family if they do not surrender. So that's the kind of way and stress that those soldiers could be under if they see that uh, that they are being filmed by a civilian. So uh, take account account with this and do not. Like I said, de-escalate, do, and if you want to do it, do it subtle, do it uh, in a secret way that you are not getting noticed. Uh, and not, uh, next thing, avoid picking up military gear and weapons. Uh, during a battle, a lot of gear get lost, scattered around, uh, perhaps from dead soldiers or uh, destroyed vehicles. Do not touch these uh, for several reasons. First reason, if you pick up military gear, uh, you will be perhaps be detained or even uh, convicted for looting uh, under military law. Second, uh, if, you, if, you, if they see you walking around with military pieces of uniform and weapons, they, they will know that you are not, not up to anything good. So do not carry any of those... Uh, do not carry any weapons that could... Um, how do I say this? Make you see uh, look like an insurgent. Uh, what is the third? The third is uh, the gear might be booby trapped uh, during a retreat. And enemy, enemy forces must leave their vehicles and weapons behind or other gear, even if it's food rations. Uh, they could be placed with a booby trap. So when uh, enemy soldiers pick them up, uh, they go boom. And as a, if you do that as a civilian, you go boom too. Uh, so do not, uh, or, or do not just pick it up, or just try to do it on a safe way that you are sure that it's the thing is not booby trapped. So that's something I'm going to talk in a, in the next video about booby traps. Uh, next thing, uh, yeah, you do not pick up uh, munitions that might uh, explode because you do not uh, know how this how it works if it's on sharp or, or uh, if it's booby trapped. So watch out with those uh, gears. Stay away from it. Uh, next. Be be neutral in the conflict. Yeah. Uh, do uh, first of all do not collaborate because yeah, during collaboration guerrilla guerrilla forces or insurgents could uh, pay you a, a nasty visit because you're collaborating with the enemy. And after the war, uh, like we saw in France, uh, people took took revenge. There were lynchings and there were uh, official uh, court courts uh, who are who are punishing the people who col collaborated with the enemy, enemy during the war. Um, yeah, and the other thing I would... Yeah, uh, it depends on the person, because I would always say do not uh, do not co uh, actively uh, collaborate. Um, what do I mean? Uh, I mean, go into the resistance or do resistive uh, actions uh, on your own. Uh, why? Uh, yeah. You would you would say yeah, but I want to fight for my country. I want to do my part. Well, you can do more harm than than good, to be honest. Because if you do not, uh, if you take some actions, just things like graffiti, shooting shooting an enemy soldier as a sniper, uh, placing a bomb that might destroy enemy equipment or even a vehicle or soldiers, those those action those can have uh, those actions can have sev uh, s uh, severe uh, consequences. Because for, uh, one, you are you are you are bringing reper repercussions to the population around you of the local population. So in a if one soldier gets shot, uh, soldiers might get pissed. Then they will take uh, repercussions and perhaps shoot civilians as a repercussion. Like I said, you don't want that. Second, if you do actions on your own, you might uh, undermine the real resistance because. If you are in a certain area and you do some uh, resistance actions, blow up something or shoot something, uh, the alertness will be high, hired, will be more high among the enemy. They will uh, bring in more troops, perhaps, or uh, uh, more uh, intelligence uh, officers or something. And that could undermine the actions of the organized resistance. So by you doing something on your own uh, could jeopardize the actions of the organized resistance who could coordinate their actions in a way that will less affect the civilian way. So try to think about those when you are thinking about doing such actions. Uh, do not collaborate and do not uh, take uh, resistance actions on your own, is the message. 
All right, next, gray man. Uh, what do I mean by that? Do not, do not be noticed and keep your operational security. It's very important to, to keep quiet and to not to, to not be noticed, for several reasons. Um, traitors, if you do some suspicious things, even if you do not uh, have are a resistance fighter or something, uh, if if a traitor thinks you're up to something uh, by perhaps you doing something weird, but uh, innocent. They can they can uh, tell it to the enemy force occupying forces and you'll be detained or uh, even worse uh, get shot. Uh, second, uh, yeah, like uh, you don't you do not want to be noticed by enemy forces or patrols. So for being uh, holded, checked, and uh, searched every time because you look suspicious for some reason, perhaps a piece of of uh, military clothing you're wearing. So be very careful about that. Uh, third. Criminals, um, yeah, uh, criminals uh, could, uh, if if you're a prepper and you talk your mouth, uh, if you talk too much about your gear, stockpile, uh, yeah, criminals know oh, by perhaps uh, by word to words uh, from people that you know and talk their mouth uh, further, yeah, they will probably break into your house, especially during war where so supplies uh, are limited. Uh, so resources are uh, low yeah you could get a visit by some burglars or even robbers or even worse uh, perhaps even looters if people are desperate enough in your neighborhood and a fourth uh, to uh, confiscation by either enemy forces or friendly forces because when forces either friendly or enemy uh, are low on supply or uh, the, their supply truck got bombed or something uh, could all happen and they are hungry they, they could confiscate your stockpile if they knew about it so even friendly forces can do this in the name of the of your country to say so yeah just keep quiet about your stockpile uh, try to delete things that uh, that let people notice that you are a prepper uh, yeah on something you can do is eat less because if everyone is hungry and get losing weight and you're one of the few people around that still has some normal weight, yeah, people will notice that you perhaps have a stockpile or another way of food, and yeah, that will draw negative attention. Uh, yeah, so be careful about that during a war, during war times. Uh, next, taking uh, always have a way to take shelter. Uh, always know the way to the closest uh, civilian shelter that the government set up. In case of bombings, rockets, drone strikes, uh, an invasion, uh, invasion of uh, enemy forces. So, and if you do not, if you do not know, Ali, have a clear, have the nearby civilian uh, shelter. Uh, no neighbors, friends, family who have a cellar, who have a shelter, perhaps that you can uh, can go to. And in the worst case, uh, try to find cover from the moment you hear bullets. Jets, artillery, rockets go go off or getting closer. Uh, like I saw a video recently about uh, uh, somebody who was on a bicycle in the Ukraine in the middle of the road because there were no cars, and the city was was sometimes being bombed. And the guy was was driving was riding his bicycle in the middle of the road, and then a rocket uh, hit the street ten meters away and. I think he got uh, severely hurted. If he would be more on the side instead of the middle of the road, he could perhaps get a chance. Or when he knows there are rockets uh, hitting uh, nearby, take cover in the side of the road, in a ditch behind behind a, a wall, uh, not perhaps in a building, or just lay flat on the ground uh, to reduce damage from a shockwave, shrapnel. Always have a way to take cover, is uh, what I'm trying to say. Uh, next, uh, do not do not become collateral damage. Uh, what do I mean by that? If you live nearby a place of targets, government buildings, military bases, uh, when the parked military vehicles, perhaps even patrols uh, of soldiers, uh, if, you, if those are close by, or uh, perhaps live, uh, live with friends, neighbors, families who live further away from those things. Why? Because 
You do not want to become collateral damage because of uh, enemy snipers, forces, a rocket strike, drone strike, or grenade attack, IED. So yeah, you do not want to become a victim because some uh, somebody who shot a certain weapon missed by a few meters. So even uh, if you're just walking down the street and you see a patrol of even uh, enemy forces and even friendly forces, try to keep your distance because the, uh, it could happen that you're just walking by, just walking past them, and somebody shooting at them, a resistance fighter or an, an or a friendly forces, who knows, and you're just caught mid in the midst into the fire. You do not want that. Keep your distance from military. A good example is. Uh, there, were, there is this video about a military convoy in the Ukraine who got obliterated by jets uh, during an airstrike. Uh, they were always uh, they were uh, slow vehicles that carried a lot of supplies and soldiers, and they got obliterated. What we no what I noticed inside the uh, after uh, behind the convoy is civilian cars cars who were also hit. So because the military convoy was slower, people civilians in cars drove behind it. And yeah, unfortunately, they got also hit by the same airstrike. So this is what I meant. From, this is what I mean with keep your distance from a uh, military forces, friendly or enemy. So uh, yeah, do not become collateral damage. Uh, next thing is a uh, know when to evacuate. Uh, if there is a war situation in and you live in an area that is prone, like a big uh, prone to, prone to war uh, and battles, like in a big city nearby. Strategic points, like I said, government buildings, uh, military camps, bases, or uh, industrial industrial parts who could get bombed. Uh, I mean, industrial zones. Uh, try to be sure, and you can you can stay in your house, but send your children like they did in World War Two and other wars. Uh, send your children to the countryside where there is less chance that uh, uh, and where the war will take their take more victims. Or uh, bombings, or uh, lost missiles, or uh, pieces of munitions. Yeah, send them to a family member, friend, uh, or with your partner to somewhere else on the countryside where it's much safer. And also send the sick, the wound, uh, perhaps wounded people, old people before. And you should be as a healthy, able person should be go last to make sure that uh, everyone is safe. That need to be safe. So yeah. Uh, I think I'm, I'm fully around now. Perhaps I forgot some things, but leave it in the comments. Uh, this was the part about uh, the second parts of uh, how to survive as a civilian uh, during a war. Uh, I hope you learned something from this. So please subscribe. It would help me a lot. Uh, if you if I forgot something, put it in the reactions uh, so I can learn also from it. If you have experiences or know someone who has experience with uh, war times. Uh, let them let them let them put in the reactions the the tips tricks that they did or something that they noticed uh, Part three will be about booby traps and munitions uh, That you will encounter uh, during a war So that will be the next part of the, in this series. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video